Hey guys, Steve here and welcome to this video. So I love my CR10 3D printer. It's really great, especially considering the price. But there are some rather easy upgrades that you can do to it to improve the just ease of use and also the print quality of it a lot. So that's what I'm going to share with you in this video. Now, if you don't want to spend any money on upgrading your printer, just some time and filament, then printing some upgrade parts is a very good way. And for the CR10, there are a ton of files on Up and Thingiverse that you can choose from. I printed quite a few of them, and I'm just going to quickly show you what they do and if I think that they're a good idea. Now, one of the first prints that you really should do for your CR10 that is that if you printer didn't come with a strain relief for the cables from the heated bed, you really should print one of those. Now my printer here came with it already, I guess they added it later in the production line, so I didn't have to print that, but I'm gonna have it linked down below with all the other files. So if your 3D printer has just the cables coming out of the back of the heated bed, not attached to anything, you really should print that to avoid them getting worn out and breaking over time. Now after that, I did a series of quality of life improvement prints. And what I mean by that is, there are many things about the CR10 that work how they come in factory, but are kind of annoying. Now, first off is the bed leveling screws. They work and you can adjust the bed with them, but they're kind of tiny. And after I printed these really huge uh, leveling adjustment knobs, I couldn't go back. It's so much easier to just fine adjust it and make adjustments on the fly. It's absolutely great. And also in the same department, making a handle to the Z-axis up there allows me to just quickly turn that handle when the motor is off to move, take it, move it up and down. It's so, so much easier than having to go through the menu and selecting the Z-axis and moving it up with a motor. I'm also using a full-size SD card with an adapter for it and it has just been kind of laying on the desk. So I printed this model that just attaches it to the printer and gives you the full-size slot on there. It's just so much uh, simpler and much more cleaner. And since my CR10 now is sitting on the desk, the vibrations from it are much more annoying. So what I did is printed this vibration dampening feed. And I just printed them out of PLA and I thought, well, I don't know if they're really going to do that much. But oh my god, it is crazy how well they work. I really have to give props to the designer who made them. They're perfect. Before, I could feel every little bit, every little movement of the printer in the table and it would actually shake my monitors. And now, I basically don't even notice that the printer is running. They work so well that the whole printer almost shakes a little bit. So I now have to think about uh, reinforcing the Z-axis to avoid it kind of wobbling around. But they really are a very, very great improvement if you have your CR10 sitting on a desk. I also printed this small adjustment to the part cooling fan. The part looks almost exactly like the original, but it has a little slope inside, so it redirects the air more downwards instead of directly onto the hot end. And I almost forgot about the filament guide by the extruder, since normally the filament is almost touching the threaded rod that moves the z-axis up and down, which is greased up and kind of dirty. So it's just a little clip that clips on there that allows you to route the filament a little bit further away. So that just was a lot of different prints. Uh, it took me quite a while to print them, but it just makes the printer so much better. You can also probably see that I removed all the blue inserts because I thought they looked kind of cheap and in one place it was actually rubbing against the axis and creating problems. So I just ripped all of it out. It's very easy with just some pliers. And then the next thing is a continuation from my making my CR10 quiet video. Now, I did some things in there that aren't quite as good as they should have been. For one, putting the vibration dampener on the extruder motor created quite a bit of problems for me, because somehow it just didn't create the right pressure on the filament anymore. So I removed that and just mounted the filament extruder motor uh, solid again. 
I also replaced the tiny knob to a fan and I don't think it actually created problems, I think it was just something else, but I replaced it with this other much bigger fan. It didn't fit inside of the housing, so I just put it on the outside, cut out the little guard that was there to give it better airflow and I think this is a lot better. It is slightly louder than the Noctua fan but moves way way more air. I was actually able to put a resistor in line with the fan because it was so hard that it almost cooled down the hot end too much. And speaking of fans, and I also took the electronics unit apart and replaced the fans in there with some different fans that are a bit quieter. And I also removed the entire bottom plate of the electronics unit and put two 120mm PC fans there. One in the front intake that's gonna put air in the system and in the back one going out. And then I just put these little round standoffs that allow the fan to sit off of the table. This gives the whole electronics unit a lot more airflow and allows me to have the fans inside run a little bit slower. Also, I noticed that the thing that makes the power supply so really annoyingly loud is not that the fan inside is loud, it's just that the guard over the fan is so restrictive that it creates huge turbulences in the air. So what I did is just take a Dremel and removed that guard entirely. Now, of course, then you have to be careful that you don't put your fingers in there because these fans will hurt you. But since I know about that and I don't care about voiding my warranty, this just made the whole thing so much quieter. It also increases the airflow so it has to turn even less of the time. And finally, the last upgrade for this video is the build plate. I was just using glue stick on my glass build plate, which works fine, but really doesn't create a nice underside of the print. So I picked up some genuine build tag and put it down and it works beautifully. It gives a very nice smooth finish to the bottom of the print and they stick really well. I was trying it with the same heated bed parameters that I was using before and I basically couldn't get off the print of the build plate. I had to use the spatula and the hammer to basically chisel the print off the build plate. So I'm gonna have to dial down my heated bed temperatures a little bit. I also did notice that the glass plate isn't really all that flat. It has a little bit of a dip in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is probably replace it with a new glass plate or a mirror or something. And also in a different video, I will probably implement auto bed leveling. I have ordered the sensor already. It hasn't arrived yet. And I also have to modify the firmware. So that's gonna be its whole entire separate video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that separate video. And also, if you like this video, leave a like down below and comment what kind of improvements you did to your Sphere 10. And maybe you did something that I didn't consider yet. So leave them down in the description. So leave them down in the comments and thanks for watching.